clear corneal lenticular extraction for advanced refractive correction, whether it's a new reason to smile or not. Here my financial disclosure. And um, before we talk about the results, I would like to run through one patient, how the planning of the procedure works, and afterwards coming to the results. So in the beginning, the first um, um, screen that you have is you need to, of course, select the correction of the patient and therefore the, cur the curvature of the cornea is relevant, the asphericity is relevant, the pachymetry, and then, um, of course, the correction, the, ta the target refraction, and then the adjustment, which depends on the cap thickness and other parameters. The second um, variable that you um, have to decide is um, where to center on, whether you want to make a pupil centered or whether you want to determine it manually. Um, however, you need to mark this then afterwards in advance. You need to define the optical zone, the cap thickness. Um, most, I started with 130, but of course there are also some people that go down to 110. Um, that is your decision. However, you need to be aware that the nomogram changes. Um, the last thing is the laser power. You can define the laser power for the anterior plane of the lenticule dissection as well as for the posterior plane. Um, John already spoke about the um, incisions. Um, here you have one incision um, that ends anterior, one incision that ends posterior. You can decide whether you want to go with both, only one. And of course, you can also decide um, where the incision is, the width, the guiding tunnel, and the entrance angle in respect to the surface of the cornea. If we have now the geometry of those incisions, we will see that one incision, the anterior incision, ends exactly in the anterior plane to facilitate the lenticle preparation, whereas the other incision is um, ending in the posterior plane. So even um, for new base um, or for rookies in, in lenticular surgery, this helps to facilitate and flatten the learning curve, or steepen the learning curve. One good thing with the, with the Z8 is that you always have an immediate OCT. So if you're not sure whether you have a 100% um, applanated cornea, you can do the OCT and see whether the applanation has happened. Um, the next thing is a video how to distinguish whether you are anterior or posterior um, to the lenticule. I'm using in this video only one incision um, and the other one only as a backup incision in case um, I get lost. However, this has happened in the first two patients and afterwards, no, not again. So I started now, you'll see the incision. I go into incision, then I turn the hook. I'll see that I'm anterior to the lenticule because there's no reflex of the margin of the lenticule. And then I can just open it up and get an entrance for the dissection later on. However, another thing when, um, before we go to the surgery itself is the decentration or centration. Jod mentioned this um, already, that since the seamer is using an applanating interface and not a curved interface, we can do a recentration of the lenticule in case of a not perfectly centered suction of the eye. Then the dissection itself, it works that we'll start in the posterior plane and afterwards go to the anterior plane, that's clear. And um, then the next step, I'll show you a video how this, um, I speed it up a little bit, get rid of the cavitation gas so the patient can fixate again. I'll open up the lenticule here exactly in the same way. As soon as this is done, I prepare the posterior plane. I'll go in with the dissector. Now preparing the anterior plane. You see that the dissection goes Pretty smooth, not a lot of bridges. In the next step, I'll go into the posterior plane. You'll see when you are, I apologize for the bad quality of that video. However, you see that the margin of the lenticule is anterior to the dissector. So this also um, is another benefit of this nice um, margin of the lenticule. I prepare it and in the end I speed it up a little bit. You just take it out, double check that the lenticule has been removed in total. Um, what are the results for the patient? Of, for that specific patient we had on day one um, results of 2030 up to 2025. 
This is more or less representative. However, we also had some patients um, that only had a visual acuity of 2050 on day one, but also 2020. So you have a wide variation, which is, um, if you have a look at the FDA study from SMILE, which is pretty similar. On day seven, after one week, um, most of the patients achieved the visual acuity of almost um, 2020. And after one month, they um, pretty much everybody achieved a visual acuity of 2020. What about optical zones? You do see here on the right side the preoperative actual curvature map. Um, one month later, the postoperative curvature map. That was one patient from July. You'll see that, um, that uh, difference map from the actual curvature and the nice homogeneous optical zone that um, we use, that we um, induced. You also see if you do a um, corneal wavefront analysis, you'll see that we did not um, induce any um, higher order aberrations from the cornea itself and also the astigmatism or the, um, that the um, wavefront gave us remained the same. Let's have a look at the anterior segment OCT, the cap thickness. I told you in the beginning that I'm using um, currently a 130 microns cap thickness, which was um, well achieved in those patients. And from the um, total aberrometry, when we measure that, um, in, for example, in this patient, you'll see that from the pre-op values, um, from the lower order aberrations, they were pretty much totally corrected. The lower or the higher order aberrations maintained equal, so we achieved kind of an um, wavefront optimized treatment with this um, clear technique. Let me conclude. Um, the first impressions of clear, it um, might be a new reason to smile. Um, the advantages of, the, of clear versus smile are clear the incisions which are superior, we do have a proper centration. And another uh, good point is that the vacuum loss stints, we have the same interface, patient interface, as um, with the LASIK or the general Z8 uh, uh, patient interface, which is flexible. We barely have no um, suction loss in those patients. When can we expect the first refractive results for CLEAR? Um, at the end of this year, from our prospective study in Zurich. What are the next optimization steps for CLEAR? And this is um, clearly the cyclotorsion uh, control that is currently has to be done manually, but um, it was promised to provide it within the very near future. And what else can I tell you about the device? We'll hear afterwards a lot of other applications of the Z8. It's an all-rounder. It is uh, a mobile device, and it can be from PK, DALC, um, femtosecond uh, laser-assisted cataract surgery, flaps, intracorneal ring segments. It's really an all-rounder that you can use for many different kind of surgeries.